Welcome to Real Kiwi Fishing. This week, Pierre and I just out off the base. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at targeting gurnard off the base. There's a lot of people that are um, quite interested in it and they keep asking me questions on it. So I thought what we'll do is we'll come out off the base. Good time of year to do it. Coming into end of July, so July, August, September. I think right up until October we catch some in good numbers, but this is the, good, the better time when the um, water's a bit cooler. Snap have dis dispersed from the area, so you've got a good chance of catching some gurnard. And what we'll do is we'll just take a look at a few techniques that we like to do when we target them. So we've got um, a few different styles. We, we um, sometimes drift through when more when there's no wind. We've got a bit of wind today, but we'll still have a shot. So we drift through the area with um, little micro jigs. Peter likes the micro jig. And we'll do a little bit of soft baiting. But also, we'll do the um, good old stray lining, bait and burly. That's probably my favourite to um, target them. The burly brings them in in good numbers. So, um, you know, that's what I enjoy more is that bait and burly. But I know a lot of you guys sort of still stick with the plastics and, and the metal jigs and stuff. But also what we've got, and I like to use sometimes, is these flasher rigs, really good for um, gurnard. For some reason, gurnard like to swim up off the bottom for, your, for their baits. They um, work really well, these flasher rigs. And the ones that I use are these Ocean Assassin ones. So we've got the Pink Pearl, and we also got a Sunrise Slayer, and they're the ones that I quite like using. Good for um, snapper as well. And they have all sizes, sort of like that three, four, five, six barrow. And they have the Mutsu and the standard J curve. I like striking on the fish, so I use those basically those J hooks and then those Mutsus, basically a recurve or a suicide hook. Pear quite likes using those, just letting the fish hook itself. If I'm catching fish and they're swallowing the hook, then I'll swap over to the Mitsu. So hopefully get onto a few uh, gurnard this morning and a few different techniques. We'll see what's working. And um, the other thing too is we might head out west at some stage and we'll look at the difference in the side, the west versus the east, maybe the size of them, how many are about and stuff like that. So a lot of people head out west for them. I like to head west for them, but we also get some good numbers on the east. So... Let's get out there and we'll see if we can uh, pick up a few nice tasty carrots. Okay, I thought what we'll do is, um, Piers jumped on the uh, little micro jig. I'm going to run a soft bait. Got a little bit of wind hanging around, so we're going to see if it's going to work for us. Might be moving a bit too quick. Don't actually have the shoot on board. But we'll have a shot. So we'll start with the uh, soft baits and Piers got the little micro jig. See if we can pick up a few um, carrots. Just going to drift through an area and just uh, see what happens. Once we find that area, we'll just move back up and drift through it. Once we um, catch a few on on the on the micro jigs or the soft baits. Pierre's got quite a uh, quite a um, small micro jig. So, not too sure if that's going to work for us. Might be a little bit too light. Okay, Pierre's hooked up to our first fish, and we're hoping it's the gurnard. It's got to be gurnard, man. Looks like it's gurnard. I never feel. See the little rod tip pumping away there? It's a sign of gurnard normally. Pierre's on that little micro jig and he actually enjoys that little micro jig in this area. I put two on it. And he's got two. I put a little, a um, bit bigger and a small one. There you go, there's your first tip. Got a little bit of wind moving quite quickly, he's chucked on two. We'll have a look at that. Once he gets the uh, fish up. Not a bad size. It's pumping away there. And that's normally gurnard. As long as it stays there. Yeah. Put it on a small one. There you go. There you go. There's his first gurnard on the little micro jig. And you can see underneath. He's got a little bit heavier one there. 
Yeah, it's like the other, small, another fish chasing the small one. Yeah. The it's got idea. that on a, uh, up behind it. So there you go, these are a nice little sneaky trick. <laughs> he's running two little micro jigs. And like what he's saying, it's like there's two, one, the bigger one's chasing that little one. one. Sort of chasing the small one. There we go, that's the uh, trick square. And then the big fish comes in and takes them, <laughs> either one. So, so far so good. We've only been here a couple of minutes. And then we just got to remember where he's getting, getting those those gurnard if he's picking them up so we know where to go back up and have another shot okay we're on our second drift gone back back up and I've hooked up on the soft bait Pierre's still on the micro jigs Feels like a gurnard. Yep. There you go. Another little gurnard on the soft bait this time. What we'll do is we'll measure him up. But he looks takeable. And that's the thing on the east coast, these gurnard are quite a lot smaller than the west. That's why I like the west coast. But we'll give them a measure up and see if we can keep them for the bin. See, it's just about there, it's the same. It's about 32. Pierre's hooked up. <laughs> it's about the same way I got that. So we're just going past a little patch and we've been catching them in that same area as we did on that first and drift. But um, so far so good. We've got three fish in about 10 minutes. Haven't worked too hard. We've only we're on our second drift. Pierre's still running his uh, magic little two rigged micro jig. If you ever want to come out and target gurnard, you really want to just lower down your the heaviness of your rod reel and even line. You don't need those real big heavy rods and reels. Just a nice little even, you know, three to six kilo little 2000 reel. It's a lot of fun. Definitely another gurnard. <laughs> the same, same. Uh, small size uh, micro jig. Yep, they're loving that little that little micro jig. His little micro jig <laughs> ends up with one of those. So yeah, not too bad so far. We'll just do a little bit more of a drift and then we'll head back up. But they're definitely back there in a little patch back there. Probably feeding on something. Now even though they're just gurnard, don't just throw them in your bin. Still dispatch them like you do with a snapper. Basically what you're doing is going past that hard shell of his head and you'll get a nice little soft spot and behind that hard shell go in there and towards his eyes it does a little bit of a groan and that means you've got him okay so don't just throw them in the bin dispatch them properly We're on about our fifth drift and our third and fourth we missed a couple which was a bit of a bummer but the um, soft baits and the uh, little micro jigs are definitely working so if you sort of pick them up each time even when you're missing them you 
you're probably getting one or two on on each sort of drift which isn't a too bad a uh, too bad getting um, that amount on, on a drift so you pick up your sort of two or three and then you head back up catch another couple head back up so what we're going to do this is our fifth drift and I think after this one what we'll do is we'll swap over to the baits we'll drift with baits and we'll see how that works for us Okay, so what we're going to do is um, we've got the winds turned up on us it's blowing probably about 10 15 knots so we're moving too quickly we tried a couple of drifts with just the bait but I think we were moving a little bit too quick so we'll have to try that um, another time it's really nice when there's no wind and you can drift around real slowly with the baits so um, drop the anchor and we're gonna get the burly going and we'll see if we can get onto them that way then we'll try our stray lining rig and we've got those um, flasher rigs, so we'll see how um, they go. I like to chuck it in the old onion sack as well. I just chuck it in the uh, big burly. It disperses pretty quickly. I do do it that way as well when the uh, fish are really on the bite and you want to keep them there. Put one in this onion sack and then one in the main burley this is a big chunks come out with that main this main burley bag and then it trickles out of the uh, onion sack when, when you want to really get it pumping but we'll drop this and then we'll see how we go normally takes up to about 15-20 minutes for them to get the centre of the burley the plan is just to keep them here at the boat and this is what I love doing for um, chasing gurnard is bait and burley I just really think you can't beat it if you want good numbers of them ok we hooked up on the baits, bait and burley, got that burley going, it's taking about 10 minutes for the first fish to turn up and it looks like it's going to be another little gurned. Snappy happy? <laughs> oh, it's, a it's just a little baby gurned, but at least it's a gurned. A little bit small for us. Gone. But that's a good sign. At least something's turned up. That burly hasn't really kicked in yet. I've only just chucked it in. It is frozen. So it takes a good sort of 20 minutes, half an hour for it to start trickling out. But I think once it does, we should pick up a few. He is hooked up. It's raining. <laughs> Got a bit of a shower coming through. This pier's hiding up the front of the little FC there. <laughs> Another little gurnard. Oh, two! Oh. <laughs> there you go, pier's on the old flasher rig. There you go, it's a good thing about the flasher. Got two two uh, hooks, two baits, equals two fish. That top one's maybe a little bit small, we might let that one go. Bottom one's okay. Looks about 30 centimetres. So that's those flasher rigs there. Pink and Pearl. Ocean Assassin. It's the one that Pierre's got. So there you go, that bait and burly. You really just can't beat baits. It's, it's, a lot of people hate it. It's messy, it doesn't need to be messy. Got our baits here on the um, bait board there. Got no mess in the boat. Really no difference, got a burly going. 
and okay hey we've got to chuck some rubbish away in the, in the end of the day you know so but I do think bait and burley this time of year will help you catch fish snapper gurna trevally or whatever that soft baiting and the, and the micro jigs does have the days to do it and we could do it um, if there was no wind and probably pick up a few fish but you'll see as time goes on these gurna will just turn up in numbers because the burley will draw them into the boat yeah hooked up again still on the uh, little stray line rig it's working well they're turning up in numbers we've only been here geez maybe 15 minutes and it just shows you Ink it up with the burly going. Oh, that's a good take, boy. Brings the fish in. Just like using those little cubes of pilly. Nothing big. Just a nice little mouthful for a gurner to come by and open his mouth, suck it in, and hook up. That burly's probably just starting to kick in now. Been here for about 20 minutes. Yep. Oh. Did you change your thing up? Dropped it. No. Actually got dragged off our spot. Hit this big front come through. And we were on the uh, fish, we got pushed off them. Pierre's got gurnet of the day. What a cracker! Yep. Here you go, it's the best gurnet so far. So we'll get that one in the bin and hopefully get it onto another couple. But yeah, very slow, it's quieting right down. Sort of moving around a bit, trying to find them again, but um, they might have come off the bite. But we've got about five or six, maybe seven in the bin. Hasn't been too bad. It's been probably been out for about two hours now. Yeah, it's hooked up again. Yep, yep. Starting to come back on the bite a bit. Yep, someone's got to do it. Here's still on those flashes. <coughs> There you go, another fish on the flasher. Pierre's stuck with the flash, he's got a um, flasher and a stray line rig there. But um, we've managed to stay um, stay anchored at the moment. And that does really help when you start sort of drifting. Sort of come, come, away, off, come away from them, they come off the bite. You gotta head back up and start again. But uh, another one for the bin. And yeah, like I was saying, those flashes. Those flashes are really good to use. Are they good? You can see there, it's just the standard J's. Pierre has to strike. They're not actually the recurve ones, the Mutsus. We do have some there, and um, if we can sit it out through this rain, and the wind and the cold, we might uh, have a look at those mutsus, I might chuck them actually on my other rod, and get, the good thing is, is you can just leave it over the side and they normally hook themselves, but um, it's starting to come on the bite a little bit more now that we're anchored, so see how we go. Another one with my goodness. Pierre's hooked up again. Yep. Looks like those uh, flashes, is it? Yep. Flashes are starting to fire. Another little gurnet for the bin. Yep. There you go. Bottom bait's gone as well. Those flashes are starting to um, work a little bit better than our stray line. So what I'm going to do, 
So I've grabbed the um, orange set. It's the uh, Mutsu style. I'm gonna chuck it on this rod here and um, just drop it straight down and see if I can just hook them sit in the rod holder. So we'll try that. Pierre's got the J's on. I'll have the uh, Mutsus and we'll take a look at that and um, see how they go. But um, yeah, it's not, not looking too bad. It's starting to come on the bite again a little bit more. Pierre's hooked up again. His flashes are starting to fire, so I'm getting mine ready. Another nice skirted. There you go. <laughs> Good Better size than what we were getting this morning. It's probably about another, probably what, 40 centimeters. Cheers. So I've got this uh, flasher rig here. The end comes basically straight like that. What you want to do is a surgeon's loop. So what we're going to do is attach a reef sinker. So surgeon's loop. And the good thing about using a surgeon's loop is you're able to change the weight if you tie it straight on. If you tie it straight on, you've got to cut the line again. So that loop allows you to change the weight of them if you need to go up or down. So you just go straight through that top of the hole, the reef sinker, under the bottom end, Pull it tight, and there you go. And when you want to change it, just do the opposite. Push that back through, pull that bottom end back over and it'll come off and you can change it. Now the other end's got a little loop. And the cool thing is, is when I was using my soft bait rod, use the little genie clip so I'll be able to clip that straight on. got that little genie clip just straight onto that genie clip like that there you go that's how easy it is all ready to go bang and don't throw away your um your rubber thing that they come on because at the end of the day you just wrap it back on chuck it in the cover again and then pack it away but try not to um when you get home give it a wash don't just chuck it in your bag and leave it like that the hooks will corrode go rusty so yeah don't throw that away so I'm all ready to go I'll just chuck some baits on that drop it over now I've, I'm running those Mutsu hooks which is pretty much a suicide hook you can see there the shape of it comes back the little barb comes back on itself a little bit different to the J hook so this is just a standard J stray line hook and you can see it you can see the difference there that hook just sort of comes back on itself and what happens is the fish grabs it the hook rolls into the corner of its mouth. So we'll see how that goes compared to Piers on the J's. He's on the uh, flasher rig J hook. He's having to strike. So I'll just stick with this and we'll see what the difference is. Well, pretty much going to call it a day. That wind's come up again. It's coming through in those fronts. We find it hard to uh, stay anchored, but um, it's worked out pretty well. Hopefully there's a bit of footage, it's not too windy or too much rain coming down on the camera there, but um, done, done um, quite well. Got quite a few in there. I think we ended up with about eight or nine. Yep. 
and uh, we missed a few, missed a few on that drift when we drifted this morning. But um, yeah, that's plenty, and uh, hopefully you guys got a few little tips there, tips and tricks. And uh, what we'll do next week, we'll try and get out again, go target the um, Gurnet again, but we'll head over onto the west coast, I think. We'll have a look, see how we target them over there. Is it the same, what rigs, and the size difference? So basically we've got in there, smallest is probably about 30, 31, and the biggest is probably around that 40 centimetres. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and uh, what we're going to do, we're going to head into the um, shallows, out of the wind a bit, and we're just going to try for a couple of snappers, see if we can pick up a couple of snapper on our way home. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it, until next time, tight lines. Thanks for watching another great day out fishing with real Kiwi fishing. And you can also find more of my movies on my YouTube channel, Real Kiwi Fishing.